Well, we are talking about money matters even as we mind the same going into the festivities end to 2022. And that's why our question of the day to you is, what is the biggest challenge you face when it comes to saving money? What is the biggest challenge you face when it comes to saving money? It might sound something that is easy for those who've been at it for a while, but others still struggle. And that's why we'd like to help each other this morning. So talk to us. That hashtag is a new normal even as we plan for the festivities and the year to come. But before we get to that pertinent conversation, let's take a look at the impact of COVID-19 around the world. And this morning, the numbers stand at 267,400,826 confirmed cases. Out of that number, 240,785,073 have uh, recovered. And unfortunately, 5,286,789 deaths have been reported due to COVID-19. In the country, 255,544 is the number of confirmed cases within the country. 248,452 have recovered and we have lost 5,337 people to COVID-19. Now to some of the stories making headlines uh, this Wednesday and Burundi's Vice President Prosper Bazumbanza visits a prison in the capital Gitega which was ravaged by fire that killed at least 38 people and injured 69 others. According to the country's Vice President, a massive fire tore through an overcrowded prison in Burundi before dawn Tuesday, killing dozens of inmates and seriously injuring many more. Many prisoners were still asleep when the blaze took hold and destroyed a huge part of the facility. Back home and Health Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe has cautioned Kenyans against procuring fake vaccination certificates stating that the vaccines are freely available for those who wish to access government services in person or travel out of a country. He also warned those who seek to profit from the government directive and Helena Ura has more on that story. As the Christmas festivities draw closer, the December 21st deadline set by government for vaccination draws nearer. In order to travel using public means, patronize an eatery or make merry outside of Kenya's borders, Kenyans will be required to provide physical proof of vaccination, a requirement that extends to access to government services. We are not forcing any Kenyan to be vaccinated. It is not mandatory vaccination. If you don't want to be vaccinated, that's fine with us. But do not expect us to risk all other Kenyans who want to be vaccinated because of you. Worry of a last-minute rush, which would open the door to the sale of vaccines or even the falsification of vaccine certificates. Government is keen to make the vaccines as widely available as possible. We shall not only administer the, uh, these uh, doses in our dispensaries, in our health centers, in our level, level, three, uh, level four hospitals, in the referral hospitals, but also we shall begin doing it in the schools, we shall begin doing it in the churches, we shall begin doing it in the most. We have a change of system that is working, and in any case, we have announced again and again that there is no vaccines for sale. 
This effort received a boost on Monday when Kenya received a donation of 4.3 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine from the German government through the COVAX facility and 400,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine from Argentina. President Uhuru Kenyatta's administration had targeted a vaccinated population of 10 million by Christmas. And as of Monday, those partially vaccinated amounted to 4.7 million, while those fully vaccinated were just over the 3 million mark. And with the advent of the Omicron variant, it is a race against time. Helen Aura, NTV. And following the accident that claimed more than 30 lives, the government has pledged to build a bridge over the Enzio River. Now, Infrastructure Principal Secretary Paul Maringa, who was among government officials who visited the accident scene, said the government had set aside 30 million shillings for the project. He also says construction works could start or would start in January of 2022. But in the meantime, the government will put up a temporary bridge to avert any such disasters in the future. Residents, however, say it's not the first time the government has pr promised to put up a permanent bridge to connect new ward in Wingi to team They intend to deliver this bridge in 10 months or less. In the meantime, um, uh, we will also improve the drift because people still be using this drift. Mm. And it's not a bridge, it's a drift. Mm. A drift is a ground level bridge where when the rain flood has come, they overtop. So we want to protect um, the users. We are going to reinforce things through NZU to NU because the soils are a little bit more stable. We are adding in an additional about one and a half to two meters. And then we are going to put in what we call bollards. Bollards are uh, metal tubes with concrete in the middle. I think you've seen them in the, in, in, and they're quite strong. We're going to embed them in the concrete so that uh, the bridge size will be very clearly defined. The commitments you have heard from the peers are also the government's commitment so that no other Kenyans loses their lives here or in any other place in the Republic in this manner. And staying with the Mwingi tragedy, the Catholic Church in Mwingi will hold a special mass this Thursday, December the 9th, in honor of the 32 people who perished on River Enziu in Nguni on Saturday. Since the tragedy and up until all their loved ones have been laid to rest, the Good Shepherd Parish has dedicated its morning and evening masses to the remembrance of the departed. Leila Mohammed is still in Mwingi and brings us the story of a choir left behind their coping mechanism and their hope for the future. Morning Mass begins with the lighting of candles offered in prayer as faithful gather in this sanctuary. Sing to the Lord all the earth. From the choice of song to the Bible verse of the day, it is clear that death and life after it was a key subject. In his sermon, the priest gives the flock hope, urging them to pray for their departed brethren while seeking intervention from the Saint Ambrose, who he notes was an activist for healing of the body, mind and soul. And uh, as we continue uh, praying for them uh, during this time of Advent, as we wait for our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, uh, we need to pray that the Lord may comfort uh, the families and also receive uh, the souls of our departed brothers and sisters in, into eternity. In the evening, those who stood by their friends, relatives and loved ones to sing in service to God gather after Mass to sing a special prayer to their Maker. The group says that the loss suffered is immense, leaving them distraught, but with gratitude for all that life has to offer. We call him at this time to be with our brothers and sisters. Wherever they have gone, may they get eternal breeze. May the Almighty be with them. Imbanchi kwa kweli walikuwa wamechitayarisha kwenda kwa harusi lakini vile walivyoimba kando ya mto kwa kweli walienda katika harusi ya mbinguni. Nyimbo zao mbili ziliashiria kwamba kwa kweli Mungu alikuwa amewaita. For this young man, life has more meaning after walking away from the ill-fated bus without a scratch. I didn't even go to hospital. Because um, I tried to hold breath for the few minutes and hours seconds that I was in the bus and I got out and I was good. I even started, uh, started uh, 
mm, trying to maybe kutoa wengine wanyalikuwa kwa gari. No, the Catholic church where the marriage was conducted is quiet, with the trading center continuing with life post this tragedy. At the home of the couple that tied the knot on Saturday, the hills in the vicinity seemed to stand tall and give cover to a family torn apart. The grief too heavy, they could not bear to relieve those moments one more time. Up until their beloved have been laid to rest, the Good Shepherd community here in Mwingi will continue to call out their names in prayer every morning and evening as they remember their time together, even as they put together a contingency plan to enable those who have been left behind to continue in service to God and self as they move forward from this tragic accident. Lila Mohamed, NTV, Mwingi, in Kitui County. Those who lost their lives, rest in peace, and of course, the loved ones who were left behind as they cope with this tragedy. We pray peace and comfort. And of course, Leila Mohammed is still following up on the aftermath of the same, and she'll keep us updated. Well, let's shift gears and uh, take a look at some of the things that are perhaps also very close to heart and top of mind at this time of the festivities. Money is always top of mind, and especially because this time around, with the school calendar being a bit unique, we only have 10 days between when the children close school and when we open for the new year. And then again, in there, we still have the Christmas holidays. So how do you play around with your money to ensure that at least you have a good time with your family? But keep in mind that there are obligations that are awaiting you in the new year. Let's try to figure that out and, of course, see beyond that because 2022 is awaiting us. And uh, to help us along with our conversation is Waidaka Gatumia, who is the CEO at Centonomy Limited. And uh, I know you're smiling because holidays are always quite a pitfall for many of us. Tell us what is this that we always fall prey to during the holidays? Okay, I'm not smiling just because of that. I'm <laughs> yes. smiling because I'm happy to be back. Thank you for the invitation to you're be here welcome. as well. Um, and yeah, first of all, um, for everyone who's watching, Merry Christmas. And uh, I do wish you uh, all the best during the f uh, festivities mm -hmm. and this festive season and into the new year. Uh, but uh, it's time to just be aware of ourselves. I think the, the lack of awareness mm -hmm. often is where the mistakes come from. Um, if, if we're not aware of the choices that we're making or the result of the choices that we're making, then we can find ourselves in trouble. So awareness is what you want to look for. I am in no way going to tell people this is time just to sit back and do nothing. No, I think um, if you've been vaccinated, you've been sitting at home for mm. the last two years and not doing much getting out, this might be a great time to actually get out and, and recharge, re-energize, reconnect with your family and friends. But in doing so, mm. just be aware. Don't just go out not knowing how much you have in your pocket. Uh, go out with a plan. And that's usually the hard part because you just want to go out. The, the, the weight of responsibility is what we don't enjoy. But I think if we take that responsibility, it can give us a much more meaningful time. Uh -huh. yeah. So you have spoken of the fact that this is a unique festive season. Yeah. And of yeah. course, a lot of people are crying that there are a lot of financial constraints yeah. that yeah. have been, you know, orchestrated by the pandemic. So what do we need to prioritize? Well, I would say, and this, this is a funny thing about personal finance, mm. because personal finance, it starts off with the word personal. What is important to you? Glad this is maybe different from what is important to me. And it is vital for each one of us to take responsibility and say, you know what, this is important to me. Uh, I'll give you an example. Even in our own home, in my home, we have disagreements on what is important <laughs> and what is not. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an idea. My wife loves to travel and she likes to get out and to go. And you know what? That's not a huge uh, priority in my life. You know what I mean? Um, I prefer just to be at home, just be with the kids. We might even order some food to come in, but she wants to get out. So being able to have a discussion, if it is a family uh, space, and say, this is important to me, this is important to me, and have some kind of compromise around that, then you're going to find a way forward. If it's just you as an individual, also come to terms with it and say, you know what, for me, this is important. For me, uh, to have an upgrade to, let's, let's say, my phone every yeah. year yeah. is important. 
I cannot take that away from you. Mm -hmm. And I can't say that that is not a good thing. It is not important to you. It's important to you, which is why when, we do, when you talk about personal finance, it starts with that word, personal. So in times like this, when you're trying to prioritize, you need to sit as an individual, come to terms with it and say, you know what? I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And then you begin to find even within yourself, there are some things that will come to the top. So I want my children, you know, let's look at it. I want my children to go to school next year uh -huh. with another four terms of school. Yes. But I also want to go out and hang out with my family. I also want to travel up country and see what's going on with the community on that side. So as you begin to look at those priorities, now you begin to see, you know what? They are all important. But if I overspend with my family, then January school fees can be mm -hmm. compromised. If I'm not very careful with that travel up country then I'll find myself not able to go out in time and, and have a good moment like that. So I need to balance all these things having written them down, having actually acknowledged that they're important. Mm -hmm. But what we tend to do, I, and I'm, I'm guilty of this, please, I'm not an angel who <laughs> fell from heaven. I'm a human being like everybody else. Yeah. This is how you want to do. Uh -huh. I have a few days off from work. Uh -huh. So you just sit. Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of like, okay, we need to travel. So you get in the car and you travel and you don't realize how much you're spending on these items. And so the month comes to an end, no money. So what do you do? Use your credit card, you borrow mm -hmm. off the mobile apps mm -hmm. in order to fill the gap. And it's simply because you didn't plan. And if you planned, then the holiday comes with a lot more enjoyment, less guilt mm -hmm. and more joy. So. Okay. Just plan. It'll, oh, it'll right. help a lot. Okay, so let's try and look at it this way. Of course, we're stretching that shilling. And yeah. we still have, you said, it's important to tick some of these boxes that bring, you know, edify our souls, so yeah. to speak. Yes. So as we plan, what should be top of mind? Because school fees is very critical. Yeah. If you start with the uh, Mwenjoyo, <laughs> it will come to hurt your children going to school. So perhaps yeah. should this be item number one if you have school going children? Yet again, Gladys, I, I struggle to tell people what is number one in your life. Uh -huh. um, I'm a man of faith. And so I honestly believe, so in my life, for instance, uh, my, my responsibility to my faith and my giving to my church, for instance, is number one. Uh -huh. So you, you get what I mean? So I will not come and tell you school fees because, uh, okay, between school fees and rent, which one is more important? That they go to school or have a place to live? Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? So that yeah. they become, it's not as simple as that. There is no copy-paste life. Mm -hmm. And so we need to take responsibility for our lives. Uh, this past year, it has really struck me that managing our finances is for adults. <laughs> and it is time for all of us to grow up, me included. Yeah. The thing about adults is that we now take responsibility for ourselves. We make decisions. We have autonomy. And the, and if we, you know, the problem, glad this is our education system. Mm -hmm. And our education system teaches us, you know, just to follow instructions. We are excellent employees. <laughs> as Kenyans and especially as Africans, mm. we are excellent employees. We, when we are told what to do, we do it with excellence. And I, 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 I am grateful for that. But the problem is because we have been trained to do what we have been told, when it, is, when it comes down to choice, and that's where we are right now. Mm. Personal finance is about choice. Choice as to where you live. Can you imagine you have a choice, Gladys, as to how much rent you pay? Mm -hmm. Or if you pay rent at all. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine you have a choice as to which school you take your children to? Can you imagine that you have a choice as to whether you're going to drive this car or that car? Or take this form of transport or that transport? So when we talk about personal finance, it's... It's shocking to people that it is based on choice. Mm. So when we're sitting in a class, this is how it is with training Kenyans. And I was one of them. Please don't look at me and I'm saying I'm talking badly about people. I'm mm -hmm. saying this is because I did it myself. I entered the class and this is what people ask. They come into the autonomy class and then they ask me, no, just tell me where to invest. Then I'm, we're sitting there and we're saying, no, no, no. What would you like? as a result. Mm. No, no, just tell me where to invest and where to buy the house and where to do all. If you tell me, I'll be able to do it. But unlocking that sense of self, unlocking that, self, self, uh, that sense of autonomy, that I have choice, mm -hmm. that's where we struggle. Mm -hmm. And so 
I'm encouraging everybody who's listening to me now. There is no formula. And if you try and follow my formula, you can't follow it because you're not me. Yeah. I'm not you. I've not had the same experiences. I've not had the same life. And so, and I don't have the same resources or opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so it is for me to maximize on the opportunities that I have where I am. You can do things that I can never be able to do it. Okay. Yeah, and oh. so make mm -hmm. those choices. Sorry. Sorry All right. So <laughs> even as we're making choices, yeah. I believe there are financial tools that yeah. can help us make the wisest of choices. That's right. Budgeting is one that I hear over and over again, and I think we all apply it one way or another. Yeah. So how would that apply in this season? Let me tell you, Gladys, you know what people think about when they hear budget? In fact, I should ask you, <coughs> when you hear the word budget, what words come out of you? When you hear budget. Uh, I see my list of to-do things. Yes. So to-do, uh -huh, uh -huh. structure, yeah. all these other things. A budget, and many people will hear even that word restriction. In fact, that's why you don't like to budget. Because mm. you feel like budgeting is to restrict you. A budget is not for restriction. A budget is for control. Mm -hmm. And so when you put together a budget, what you're saying is, I am taking control. I am deciding where my money goes. Um, our founder, Washa Kendwati, she's, she's famous for saying this. She says, give your money a job description. That's what, that's what your budget actually does. It is taking control of your money rather than your money taking control of you. Mm -hmm. So when you sit down to budget, you are in control. That's what I'm saying. It is your moment for you to say, this is what I want to achieve. When I budget, don't say your budget is not for rent, for school fees and food alone. And that's often what we do. Your budget is also for meeting with your friends on a Friday, uh -huh. going out to the club on a Saturday, being able to go with your family out, out of Nairobi or out of the city, wherever you are, and going to travel and see some other place. Put that in your budget because your budget expresses what is important to you. Mm -hmm. So in this season, it is important for, to me to take my children to go swim somewhere. So swimming is in the budget. Mm -hmm. It is important in this season for us to be able to visit with family. So visiting family is in the budget. Many times we think of our budget as, you know, you put, you know, all the, we have called the ABC budget. So you put all your A's, you know, down in your budget and you forget about everything else. Mm -hmm. No, the budget is an expression of what is important to you. So when you sit down to do your budget, say, this is, hey, I want to buy a new outfit. This, you know, I don't want to go for Christmas with the same outfit. Put it in the budget. Guess what will happen at that point, Gladys? Because you don't have infinite resources. Now you begin to see, these are my priorities. These are the things that are important to me. And now you'll start allocating and beginning to see, actually, which one rises to the top? Mm -hmm. Which one will you achieve? And which one will you say, you know what? Let's plan on how we can achieve it later. Uh -huh. So the budget process is not to restrict you and to make life difficult. The budget process is to give your money a job description. Mm -hmm. Take control of your money. I love that. Giving your money a job description. Okay, so even as we put together this budget yeah. and try and figure out how or what our priorities are, most people say they start off with all the best intentions, mm -hmm. but fall off at some point when especially you tick the most important ones. That's so right. what should we always do to ensure that you keep to what it is that you put to paper? I have found, and I, this is a hard one because even I struggle with this until this moment. I have found that your, the result of your effort is based on what really matters to you. Let me make it relatable, mm -hmm. okay? There are people who say, I want to lose weight, yeah? Mm -hmm. So they want to exercise and, and diet in order to lose weight. And then... It comes to the end of the year. If you end at this, you know, come to this point of the year and you're, you're still fitting in the same things that you're fitting in before. You know why? Because the sugar, the cakes and everything were actually more important to you than losing the weight. Ooh. The result shows you where your value was. So the result where you find yourself getting back into debt because you didn't plan is a result. It's... It's evidence 
that those things that you're saying that were not as important are, are important to you. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. We must take personal responsibility to sit down and say, I want this in my life. And if I want this, there mean, it, it therefore means I have to change certain attitudes. Gladys, if I want to earn more money in my workplace, then I have to become more valuable. Mm -hmm. If I want to earn a higher salary, I have, to be, I have to become worthy of that salary. And it means I have to do more than I'm, worth today, than I'm being paid today. Mm -hmm. It means I can't just show up to work and do the bare minimum. I have to be exemplary in order for somebody to notice me and give me a promotion or for another company to notice me and give me that job. And so I am the, it is a result, that salary that somebody is earning, that amount of money is a result of what they decided and what is actually important to them. Mm -hmm. So if you want to lose weight, Gladys, then you look at that cake and say, you know what? What is more important is fitting in that outfit. And so you leave the cake. But if you eat the cake, what you're saying is that cake is more important than the outfit. And this is, what, this is why personal finance is not simply, as I said, copy-paste. Because if I tell you copy-paste, there, there are some things that people have done that Gladys people are not willing to do. Yeah. For instance, we had this couple. Can I give an example? Yes, if you don't you mind? Can. yes you um, can. We had a couple who came to our class. And they were saying, you know what? We want to be debt-free in the next five years. So mm -hmm. that was their goal. So we looked at it and we, we, we broke down some of the issues that they had. And they said they had one of these assets, which was their own home. They were living in their own home. Can you imagine they had bought their own home? Uh -huh. And they looked at it and they said, you know what? We don't need all the space that is in this house. Can you imagine they moved out of their own home, went to rent a smaller place, rented their own home to somebody else. The rent they were earning was paying them enough to pay their rent where they were staying in that small house and to pay off their debt and they did so in less than the five years that they were talking about how many of us are willing to make that choice mm. to move out of our home do you see what i mean yeah. that choice is not easy mm -hmm. that choice doesn't make sense to everybody out there in the world <laughs> i can see the crew here laughing yeah. at what i'm saying that choice does not make sense but to them it was it was what they needed to do to achieve their goal so when we're talking about personal finance, we have to take personal responsibility and the evidence is in, in the results. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. I'm hearing you say is that yeah. you've got to be ready to get uncomfortable, mm. sacrifice to ensure that you actually live up to the goals you set out to. Gladys. Yes. I said this a couple of years ago and I, I, I'm, still, I'm still recovering myself because <laughs> when I realized it is true, yeah. growth, Gladys, only happens in discomfort it is uncomfortable to go to a wedding and not eat the cake if you want to lose weight it is uncomfortable to move i told you out of your own home mm -hmm. rent it so that you can be able to pay off your debt and then have the financial freedom later make that choice now for the future it is uncomfortable gladys to show up to work earlier than you should mm -hmm. and live later than you should do more than you should it's not comfortable but guess what the results of that discomfort because you, you imposed it on yourself gives you the satisfaction that you're talking about. But when you do the opposite and you kind of live life blasé, you're mm. kind of just there, you, you end up in even greater discomfort because you're stressed now. You have no control. You're not, uh, sorry, you're not in control mm -hmm. of the things around you. So tell wow. me this way, Becca. Yes. We fall prey, especially within the festivities, to just, you know, have fun, yeah. entertain our family members, you know, go out with our friends and all that. So really you get that people live beyond their means. Yeah. We always advise, crutch as far as you can reach. <laughs> How and why is this so important, especially when it comes to money? Because I think this is also another pitfall. Yeah. Because imagine there is January coming up. December is not the end. Mm -hmm. And look... This has been an extremely difficult time in our lives across the board. And, and you saw the numbers. We as a, as a globe have lost almost 6 million people. I, the, the weight of it is even hard to mention. But even as we have this discussion, many people, we still are alive. And by the grace of God, we will still be alive next year. So live like there is a next year. You know? 
Live like this. Plan as if there is a future that is ahead of you. Mm -hmm. The problem is that we go and when you say that, when we splurge during a holiday like this, is because it's as if we are, you know what, there is no tomorrow. It's, it's what uh, many people say, that you only live once. Eh? Yeah. So it's YOLO and you just, and then January happens. Like you, no, we know. It's coming. It is coming <laughs> and it will continue. Yeah. So li and here's, here's the thing. The myth is this, Gladys. The myth is that I cannot enjoy myself and plan at the same time. I cannot enjoy myself and also have some savings. That's the myth. What we have found is that if you sit down and take control of your money, there is enough money for you to go out, to save, and to have enough for January when it comes up. Uh -huh. There is. Mm -hmm. It's just we are uncomfortable mm -hmm. again <laughs> in, that, in that setting of, have, of having to actually plan. But let me tell you, take a moment, uh, to everybody who's watching, take a moment today. Just sit one half an hour to an hour in the evening and just say, this holiday, what do we want to do? How much do we have? What would we like to achieve? In that one hour, it will save you months of discomfort in 2022, mm -hmm. paying off the debt that you shouldn't have taken during this holiday to do that. Because guess what? You begin to realize, I think... Um, uh, I think there was, it was your producer who sent me this question about yeah. black tax, eh? yeah. S supporting your relatives. You begin to realize, you know what? Not every single relative need, needs my support. I know that is controversial. Especially in an African context. It is. <laughs> but guess what? It is also an Afri un African to be lazy and to not work. It is un African. And if you think about what our Af the African history was, it was community and everybody participated as a community. There was no one waiting on the side of the road with hands out. No, if you didn't have work, you'd come and work together with, on the farm and you would, you would gather together and learn from that. So this idea of just giving handouts, uh, 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 empower that person. Mm. A good example from, uh, from our family, at, and by the grace of God, is one of our relatives was struggling. And rather than sending money, we raised funds to help them start a business. So we funded them in order to, for them to be able to start the business. Now they are responsible. You taught them how to fish. There you go. All right. <laughs> Excellent. I love that. Personal responsibility, whichever way you look at it, when it comes to personal finance. Remember, it is the festivities. January is awaiting us. So we've got to be smart about how we make use of our money. And that's how and what we're talking about this morning with uh, Waidaka Gatumia. He is the CEO of Centonomy Limited. Now, remember that question of the day to you is, what are the things you struggle with when it comes to saving money? Because even as you're planning, it helps that you have some finances to back you up with your plans. So what are these things that make you struggle when it comes to saving money? That hashtag is a new normal. If I can get some of that feedback. So I have one here saying, you save money two weeks, you receive a call from home. Grandmother has swallowed an axe, sent something. Thank you. We hear you, of course. An ex expression and extension of black tax, as we were saying it. Uh, William Maramba says money should not be saved. It should be eaten away with wives. Really, William? Aya basi, tuonge January. Chege Paul says my biggest challenge is where to get the money for my basic needs and savings. We hear you, Chege. A lot, a lot of people are facing this reality. Mosa says biggest challenge is saving the money. So what exactly about the saving the money do you struggle with? That's what we'd like to hear. Antidote says saving money itself is a challenge. Two people now saying they are struggling saving money. Another here from Rafiki Wakanga. He says that money is the challenge. Ikoapi ni kule kwanza, saving badai. Really? Hi, Abasi. I believe those two things can happen at the same time. Kabarange says, Niki save miambili. Um, let me see if I can see that properly. Nashinda niki zunguka zunguka bank na rungu niki chunga pesa zangu bada ya wiki na choka withdraw na kula na ka kwa amani. <laughs> Aki pesa wewe. All right, Kogi says, walking around and seeing how yummy muturas have become. <laughs> Impulsive spending is also another pitfall for many. 
And uh, Silver here says, says this festival season to Mia Pesa Ikwizoe. <laughs> A famous saying here in the Kenyan context, and uh, whether I'm sure you've had, to Mia Pesa Ikwizoe, Javini. Eh? <laughs> Let me help. Let me help with some of them. Yes. If you don't have the money, you can't spend it. Mm, good point. Okay. Yes. So get it away from you as early as possible. So one of the things that has worked for me is to automate. So you know the way you have that check-off system when you're paying the bank the loan? Mm -hmm. They just remove it from your account before you know. Yes. Do the same even with your saving and investing. Mm -hmm. So you say, give your bank an order and say, this is a standing order every month. When the money comes in, it goes. You don't even see it. Mm. Okay? That's one way. Put it away from you so that you can't access it. Here are the tough choices. On your phone, remove all those apps which can tempt you to be able to borrow. Mm. If you have a credit card, don't carry it in your wallet. Don't carry Hide it somewhere in your house. A hard place. In fact, you might even give it to a relative to keep it for you. Give it to your spouse. Yeah. Give it to someone else who's responsible in your home and tell them, keep this somewhere for me. Because this is actually going to help me if I don't have access to it. Mm -hmm. But it's not... Now that you don't have access, don't also remove all the things that matter to you. You see that mutura is very important, uh -huh. but not every day. Yeah. It plan for it in this week and say, guess what? On Friday, after work, mutura day. we are there. <laughs> I, in fact, tell the guy so he prepares for you in advance. Mm. It is so important that we take control of our lives. No one else is going to do it. Who is managing your money? And that's why I talked about us as, as employees, because we are excellent. I'm talking to people because I have seen it. We work so hard, I know you do, to take care of NTV's money. Mm -hmm. You show up on time, you do your work perfectly, you leave, you come up early, you do extra work. You're managing somebody else. So who's managing yours? When you go home and you sit and you just do, ah, I'm tired, who's actually doing managing your money? So we have to take that control and say, you know what? The muture is important to me. Mm -hmm. Put it in my, in my budget and my plan. Not the one that is just random. What we're trying to do is not to live our lives randomly, but to make sure the things that are important to me are in my plan. Uh huh. Yes. And uh, even as we bring this conversation to a close, of course, as we said, the new year is here with us and uh, there are many that crave financial freedom yes. going forward. We've talked about savings. You've given us a tidbit of how you can ensure you can save the little you have. Yeah. Investment is something else you were throwing out there even as we were giving us uh, the example you give us with the couple. Yes. How else can we ensure our money works for us in 2022? Learn. This is the best time to invest in learning because you only get good at things that you spend time learning. I've just realized this. We are good at languages because we use them. You d if you don't use a language for a long time, you don't use it, it's not part of your life, it, it gets lost. Mm -hmm. So become well-versed in the language of money. Pick up books that are going to help you. Attend classes that are going to help. It doesn't just happen like that. I assure you, it, you don't just fall into these spaces. Get a mentor who you see and have seen their lives as being really important and, and what they have done in success. In, in the Centonomy class, one of the assignments, I'm giving this one for free. Mm. You, we give people and tell, go and find somebody in your network who is wealthy. And just sit, sit down with them. Buy them a coffee. Don't ask them to buy your coffee. <laughs> buy them a coffee uh -huh. and ask, just ask them, how did you get where you are? Let me tell you, it will surprise you. The choices, the opportunities, the pitfalls that people have been through. And when you learn from others, I'm telling you that's the highest level of learning. Rather than learning from your own mistakes, learn from other people's mistakes mm. so you don't repeat them. It is time for us to say, if this is important to me, I'm going to invest in it and learn. Mm. The problem is we get our investment and saving advice from Anko, who himself, he is struggling. Yeah. We get our investment advice from our friends at the bar who are at the same bar with you, all of us dressed together. Go and look for an expert who can be able to sit down with you and tell you, you know what, if you do this over this period of time, you can achieve this. This is an investment that can work for you in this direction. Spend the time learning. 
that will be one of the best investments that you can ever make because it will change what happens to you. Here's the thing. We usually have our lives based on our experiences. This happened to us when we were children, our mm. parents. I know the school told me this, the government, all this, all this, all this. Now that you're an adult, because I'm speaking to adults now, now you have an opportunity to, to shift that and to say, guess what? I can change my pattern. And the person who takes that personal responsibility and says, you know what? I am tired of this hard life. They are the ones who wake up and go find a solution. Mm -hmm. But if you're not tired, if you're not just driven out of that position, we just live life in general. <laughs> and so you get a general res result uh -huh. that is on the way. So invest in learning, especially in 2022, because it will give you a leg up. It will give you something to look forward to. One last thing, can I? If you yes, don't mind. you can. Yes, you can. I have found that in our classes at Centonomy, the wealthiest people in the room are often the most curious. I've, I mean, I've never, it shocks me that often after the class, it is the person who is even more wealthy than me. I know because I've seen they usually bring their budgets and things. I know they earn even more than me, mm -hmm. but they will come and ask a question because they realize that by learning from somebody else, they are building themselves up. Those who have nothing, just quiet in the room. Not, no curiosity. No willingness to ask. In fact, they think if I ask, I look stupid. No, 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 no. Mm. If you ask a question, it will make you wiser. Wahenga walesa makuliza si ujinga. Hey. Hapo sasa. Uh -huh. I'm telling you. Yeah. The only foolish question, that's what my high school English teacher used to say, is the one that was never asked. Yeah. So ask that question. Mm. It will make you better. Very well said. Waidaka <laughs> Gatumia, CEO Centonomi Limited. I think we walk away with great nuggets in as far as personal finance is concerned into the festivity and, of course, beyond to 2022. Asante Sana. Thank you so much. All right. So now we'll shift gears in the next hour, even as we focus on environmental conservation. Of course, we know the just concluded COP26 UN Climate Conference put into perspective the importance of each and every country to take up climate action to mitigate the effects of global warming. We'll talk more about that in a moment.